the very first step is to show that these numbers are really aspects of one's own personality and that they are also guides. They represent aspects of yourself. And the beauty of it is, is that these are your tools or your methods of changing reality and changing the world to suit your agenda. These are healing tools as well. They help you to become educated into how the mind actually works. As opposed to the world that is now, the mind is out of sync because we haven't been using these tools. So we perceive reality or the mind perceives reality, but the mind may not be reality. The mind may be out of sync, very in a state of unsanity and unreality where you are subservient to the world's order and the world controls and the world dictates and the dictates of other people. As we go through all the numbers, they all have these meanings relative to human traits and proclivities. First, we accept that they're encapsulations of human traits. The numbers are also mirrors because they both uh, facilitate your ego needs, but they also instruct your ego needs. Mm -hmm. So more clearly what they are, they're both teachers and they're facilitators. They are like they, they're two ways, like a signal, like an ele electrical signal or like a guitar amplifier with the cable. You know, the pick up on a guitar is two ways. You know, it sends out a sound, but it's also receiving a signal. And communication is always like that. Astrologic, numerological archetypes are also two-way signals. For instance, a good comparison is in astrology. When you have a planet occupying a particular house, an astrologer says, oh, you have Mercury in the first house, and this means this, 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 and this. In my particular take on astrology, I always incorporate the fact as, yes, but it's not just telling you what is going to happen in the external environment coming around the corner, so to speak. It's also saying what you should dress like for the occasion. It's saying that, because oh, look, at it, look at it the way that most astrologers would do it. They'd say this is going to happen in the normal predictive style. But that means then that you don't really know exactly what's going to happen, so you have to be playing it by ear all the time and expecting something to come around the, the corner. The alternative way to read it is that the archetype or the planet in that house is telling you, no, this is what you do regardless of the situation that arises. Ah, suddenly there's a whole different slant on it. So now you say, whoa, okay, then it doesn't really matter to me what comes around the corner and I'm all ready for it because this archetype has told me what to wear for that situation. This is where the art really comes in. Now the numbers are the same thing. So when somebody says, I did not see on this particular day X happening, well, there's... Numbers have these two faces. It's like the god Janus of the two faces. You were maybe expecting it to have this, how would we put it? This, um, you expected it to manifest something in your life outside your participation. So you, you sat back and you didn't really participate in it. The key in this is to be a co-creator with the numbers. Right, and this is their higher level aspect, which of course in the beginning people may not be aware of because they're always externally looking. They really do imagine that fate is this external thing separate to consciousness, that there's you, right? And then there's this autonomous thing called fate that just has its own mechanisms. For a lot of people, because of various conditionings, we're not aware that it's like cogs in a wheel. Every cog is inter interconnected with another cog, that consciousness and fate are the same thing. You know, as the Greeks said, your character is your fate. So who you are and your attitude and your thinking process is does create the fate that comes to you. But if you're into these arts, then that's a given. The consciousness and the world energy, the energy of fate, of destiny, are totally one and the same thing, and that your thinking cr creates the kind of lifestyle and the life path that you have. Now, that brings in these arts, because time gnosis, time scopes, numerology, is a life map of that life path. It helps you to make sense of it, like a sort of a pie chart or a, a graph. And then instead of it being static, Instead of it being just like a physical static calendar of the year or any kind of static thing, which you can't change, very much like a clock, that clock on your wall is fixed archetype. If your boss says be in at 9 o'clock, you come in at 3 o'clock, it just isn't going to work. The time dial, all forms of external time are basically rigid, they're fixed, and you have to obey them. And we get so programmed into that, I mean, when it's 12 o'clock, it's no good saying it's 6 o'clock. That thing is static. The world agrees, it is, or America agrees, or England agrees, it's 6 o'clock, and you can't say it's 7 o'clock. However, the time scopes, there's something else there. There's another principle, which is that you can, in fact, manipulate it. So this is what brings in the magical aspect of it, is that this thing has this element which is receptive to your own will. The difference with numerology and the time scopes concept is that yeah you're using something that we call time but you're using the essence of time meaning that when you know how to work with these numbers they're not only telling you things 
they're not only not only instructing you, they're not only informing you. It's like say a, an executive sitting at his desk. He doesn't have the time to run around and find out what's happening in every corner, but he gets reports. It's like the government. They have different agents who bring you reports, say, this is what's happening now. This is what's happening emotionally. This is what's happening physically. This is what's happening in the lives of other people that you know. This is what's happening in the world in general. So those dossiers that are passing your desk are these numbers. But the beauty of it is, in numerology, they work both ways. It's sort of like a quantum principle, but when the director is reading that dossier, his reading is changing the reality. So it's real sci-fi. It's very futuristic. In a normal physical context, reading the reports of what's happening in a different part of the business or a different part of the corporation or a different part of the country, just reading it physically doesn't change anything. It means that when you are working with the numbers, first you're hearing what they say. This day means this, this one day means that, the nine day means... This is your beginning education. As you start to embody what this is telling you, your consciousness reacts with the day. So say you're in a seven day and the seven has told you this is normally an outline of what the seven day represents. But now what you're doing is you are embodying that and whatever sevenness is or what sevenness means is an aspect of your consciousness. It's not a piece of paper like a dossier on the director's desk. It's a living thing. So now when you embody that, you're in a relationship with a living thing in exactly the same way as you're in a relationship with a living person. This is very important because most people do not consider numbers to be living. We in the Western world have lost this incredible relationship with things because we think they're inanimate. So the first step is to realize that these numbers are aspects of yourself. And if they're aspects of yourself, then they have two roles. One is that they inform you about what's happening in your life, 11 different facets of life. But they also now, that information is instantly fed back so that you are changing what they've just told you. So your action is also changing the day. The information is instantly fed back into the realm of experience in the world. And you then are changing your own life. But this is the difference between you changing your own life and somebody else change is happening from outside, from a boss or a peer or a set of meaningless karmic s- circumstances that happen in life. Suddenly the reins are in your own hand. This, the numbers are just training you how to use those reins. It's like riding a horse or riding a bike. You need a certain amount of training, but then the rest is yours. So these numbers are training grounds for the mystery that we call life. They are the operating manuals that we should have been given when we were first born to show us that we have a personal living calendar, but that calendar is not a static, one-way, fixed thing at all. It's not like a clock. It's not like a a sundial. It's not like the usual calendar of the year. It is a calendar, and it has to do with time, but it's a two-way thing. It, It responds to you, and each of these numbers should be considered as living as a human being, and should be considered friends. There are 11 helpmates, 11 servants, 11 facilitators, 11 tutors that show you what to do on certain days, what might be coming on certain days, and also to empower you to then start to change the reality that you live that is always changing anyway. We're always playing catch-up and have great things happen and have no part of your life out of sync, which has bothered a lot of people into spirituality and metaphysics is that they have a lot of areas working, but then maybe one area is really weak. So working with these works on many, many dimensions. But just on a surface level is that now you're ahead of the curve. The first step is to realize that these numbers are really aspects of your own personality, that they are you, or there are 11 versions of yourself, like 11 different mirrors of you. So that on, and on each day, you know, it's like, it's like having a, a, a wardrobe of 11. So the 11 archetypes are like mirrors of your own self, aspects of your own personality. They're like seven different costumes that you can choose to wear. What we are doing is that we're wearing the wrong costumes on the wrong day. You're trying to go to the ball in your work clothes and you're trying to dig ditches in your in your wedding dress. It certainly gives comic relief to the gods, but boy, it doesn't help our material life much better. So in other words, say a seven is a person. And this person comes in and says, well, today, this is more of a sabbatical day. It's a day for research. It's a day to stay in the background a little bit. Uh, Today, you don't want to put yourself out. Today, you want to analyze. Today, you want to troubleshoot. Uh, Today, you want to research. That kind of thing. All the things that the seven day represent. You are the one acting on the seven day with that information that's given to you. But each human being then is slightly different. So say the person who's not very, very super active physically in their life anyway, their five-day will not be quite the same five-day as a histrionic person runs out the door at 4 a.m. 
and is already jogging and has accomplished everything by noon and they still got the rest of the day. So, so there's differences. For instance, an eight day, we know that introverted, demure, sort of reserved, quiet people are probably not going to have the same kind of eight expression in their lives as somebody who's a total overachieving go-getter who just seizes on every opportunity, which is not good for people who are very pedantic and who need a lot of planning and who, who are just so retentive in their consciousness. The eight day, you see, will be experienced differently by those people as opposed to the go-getter who, who can just move quickly and who relies on, the, on chance. Other people don't rely on chance. They rely on their own patterns. And sometimes that can be a limitation. So somebody goes, oh, listen, I've been using your calendar and on eight days I don't see a thing of any success coming to me at all. Well, yeah, because the things are coming there, but you're vetoing it by your own energy. When in fact that eight day might have been a call to arms, a call for you to change your particular vibration and your particular attitude. Mm. You're not moving out of your own set pattern, you see. And therefore, these opportunities are coming, but you're not seeing them or you're not grasping them because they come to your door and then you slam the door in their face. So the numbers, again, are facilitators, but they're also guides. They can help you practically in the world, and they also guide you to know how to gain greater success. Those numbers are there because they represent certain kinds of human proclivity.